Hey guys, Killpond here, and here's my video of how I make uh, me as a figure, custom action figure. I'm not the greatest artist or the greatest customizer, so please be kind in the comments and hit that subscribe button. And if you like the video, like it, and also uh, head over to my Twitch and the GM's Twitch. I'll put those links in below, and then enjoy the painting. Hi guys, Kilpon here. Today we're going to do some custom work. Turning a figure into me. I'm going to get out of here because I got all blurry now. God damn it. Alright guys, so today I'm going to turn this guy into a Kilpon. As we all may have guessed by now, Kilpon is loosely based on, look at that, ooh, loosely based on Deadpool. Um, uh, kind of design wise, um, if you look at this figure and see any of the pictures I post on Instagram or my like page, I did not got a little different design which you can't really tell the difference this is x-men deadpool not not the regular deadpool but anyway i did uh as far as the suit itself i hope i, I made the simple yet kind of different design the eyes isn't really the eyes that i usually use on him but we're gonna try to do that on this figure but okay so first what i want to do is don't need this gun which we might need it later because kilpon just might get a new gun so we'll see so don't need this gun and let's see the thing i don't need these things on his legs so we'll take those off can i get those off oh no this is the struggle. Okay, can I get these off? I might have to cut these off. Oh, nope. Nope, they'll slip right off, so. Take those off. I don't need those. Oh. Take that off. Uh, hand things. Will those come off easy? Let's find out. It doesn't look like it. Uh, let's see. Will this belt come off? Problem with this belt. I could probably leave the belt on here. And paint around it. Because I don't want to try to... Because I need the belt. I don't want to try to shove the belt back on there. And scrape up paint. But these... His swords can go for now. So we'll take those off. Alright, so I got that. Broke it. Pop his shoulders out of place. Alright, so far. Looks like a pretty neat smooth service. Now I'm not gonna do anything really major. This is just gonna be a simple paint job. Um, I'm not going to add anything. I'm just going to paint it so it's not going to be too fancy. I don't have an X-Acto knife, so we're going to try <laughs> this. Careful, and don't cut yourself when using this kind of tool, which I'm about to do. I hope you guys come to see Gore. Hopefully, I won't come to that. <laughs> Alright, so cut that off. I don't want to cut it into his wrist a little bit, but uh, I think that will be fine. Nothing that little paint ain't gonna fix. Yeah, it looks fine. So we go over here and drew it on this side. I don't remember where I got this knife. Well, actually, yeah, a friend gave me this knife. Comes in handy though. It's got these little saw things on it. 
It comes in handy for things just like this. I'm sure this was not the intention of this knife. This looks like more of a survival um, knife for like I don't know, rescue worker or something. So we are not done cutting through that. Uh, uh, uh. So we are going to cut that. Pull it off. Get it off of there. Deadpool doesn't want that to come off. He's fighting me. He doesn't want to become Kilpon. Too bad, dude. You will. You will. Alright. Let me... Don't try this at home, kids. This is dangerous. And I'm poor, and I ain't got a lot of stuff. So this is my best option. So, yeah. Never cut towards yourself whenever you do stuff like this. Um... Be very, very careful. Unless you want some kind of natural pain on your figure. But it only works if uh, you wanted, uh, you know, that color red on that part of the figure. But anyway. Alright, so that's done. Put up the knife. And so now we have a figure. I don't know exactly how we're going to do this, so I'm going to pull up a picture of Kilpon. And now we have our picture. Picture up here that uh, I used. If anybody's followed me on my like page or on Instagram, they would have seen this picture before. Just a little candid shot of Kilpon that I've done. So we're going to put him down in the corner here. And then... Alright, so we got our picture down here. And I know kind of what I want to do. Okay, so what I do... I'm not fancy. I'm not fancy at all. So, <clears throat> I don't use any special paints. This is cheap paint you can get from Walmart. Artist's Loft. This is Mars Black. And I also like, when I'm customizing figures, I also like to use <laughs> the blister that they come in, just because I think that's funny. So, we'll take a little bit of this. Put it in here, one of these holes here. Here, where it goes. Set it to the side. And we got some red. It's gonna have red and black. Okay, and then put this little bit of this in there. So, got my brush here, get it a little bit wet. Dink, 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 dink. So how do we want to start? Let's start with the head. I want to start with the head. I want to start with the head. That's the most important part, is the mask of any superhero. So I really probably should have sanded that down. Because Kilpon doesn't have that. He is a smooth mask. But, as I said... I don't do anything fancy. Maybe future, maybe in the future when I get better stuff and can afford better things to use, maybe I'll start looking into shaving that stuff off. But for this, it's just going to be a simple paint job. I like using acrylic because this kind of acrylic just dries fast enough. So by the time I get down to the body um, the head will be dry and then I can start on other things 
So I'm just going to cover all this up. Do, 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 do. So, kill pawn. While I'm doing this, I'm going to talk about the intricacies of painting. So I'm going to cover up the eye a little bit too. I want it to be the same color, which eventually this part will be red. But we want it to be the same color when we get there. <clears throat> so kill pawn. I'll go. I'll give you a little backstory on him while we're doing this. Um, he's a superhero in a mutants and mastermind game. Played with the GM. Anybody that follows the stream, go to Twitch TV slash kill, kill pawn, damn it. And slash TV or Twitch TV slash plus four initiative bonus for our streams. When me and the GM play games, anyway. So we've been playing this Mutant and Mastermind games. Game. Uh, well, we've got different games in the same universe of that game. We've essentially built our own comic book universe uh, within that game. We've been playing it for about five, six years. Um, we have our own superheroes, our own lore. Um, it's pretty neat. Kilpon's one of them. One of the heroes that we play. So if anybody hasn't guessed, I'm sure by now, Kilbon is clearly based on Deadpool. I try my best not to say that. I don't know if this. I don't know if I can. I don't know if I can say that on on uh, streaming things. But uh, don't want to get dinged for anything. But you know, I've heard other people talk about it, so I wanna. So yeah, he's based on Deadpool. Originally, when I created him, um, essentially he was my way um, of playing Deadpool in the superhero game. Like there was nothing that different about him. I just changed his name to Kill Pond. Please tell me you get that reference. Um, so. As the years progressed, Kilpon had has developed his own story, really. So his backstory involves, um, in our comic book universe, there is a government organization called Falcon, which is essentially our world's version of S.H.I.E.L.D. from the Marvel Universe. Um, Anybody, anybody that's not been living under a rock for the past 10 years and has seen any Marvel movie knows what S.H.I.E.L.D. is. So Falcon is our version, except for a time, well I guess, I, I've never really read that many Marvel comic books involving S.H.I.E.L.D. So I don't know if this was a thing in Marvel comics, but Falcon, for a long time was very corrupt they were like the bad part of bad part of the government um organizations they were i guess black ops they um they did the shady things that nobody else would do um in lieu of uh, well, basically, it wasn't <clears throat> wasn't anything patriotic. They weren't trying to protect the country. Falcon was just out for power and money and yada yada yada. So, Kilpon uh, was a soldier. There's nothing really special about him before. His name was Wayne Winston, and he was a soldier. He was very good at what he did. He was essentially a very bad guy. <clears throat> like the, one of those soldiers types that just loved going over there and shooting. Um, imagine the scene from Full Metal Jacket uh, when they're trying to interview the one guy on the helicopter. But they're interviewing the guy and he's talking about, you know... All the different Vietnamese he's killed. Women, children, whatever. 
Um, so essentially that was Kill Pawn. Like, he didn't care. He had a very high kill count. He was a ruthless killer. Um, he had no family. He was an orphan when he signed up. Um, so yeah, there's nothing altruistic about Wayne Winston. <clears throat> he was just really, really good at killing. Um, so Falcon noticed this. He was one of the top, like, ranking soldiers in his platoon. He was in, in the army, um, but he had such an impressive kill count, an impressive way of not caring and doing whatever it took to win whatever war he was in. He was in. Now, he's been around for a very long time, which is still yet to be determined because we're still building on that in game. Um, still working on backstory stuff. Um, but he was in the Vietnam War, he was in several wars, and he was a soldier. Um, which, <clears throat> you know, that's kind of like his inspiration. Uh, Deadpool was a soldier. And uh, Black Ops, whatever. But he becomes a mercenary before he becomes Kilpon. Um, which is essentially kind of like Deadpool's thing, too. But there are still lots of differences. There's sli I mean, how many characters in the history copy other characters' origins slightly? Um, so I don't think it's that big of a deal. Okay, so anyway, Falcon ends up tapping Wayne Winston to be one of their top mercenaries. World-renowned mercenary who would kill indiscriminately, um, not worry about who he killed. As long as there was a paycheck in it and the powers that be told him to do so. And that was his job. He was very, very good at his job for the longest, longest time. Um, he was essentially, and of course, Falcon, as the organization they were, did not really care. They didn't care about him as a person. He was their weapon. He was one of their best weapons. And... Um, so they wanted to make sure they always kept their best weapon in shape, um, healthy, ready to be used at any time. Um, he didn't need to be, like, a sleeper agent like you see in the movies or whatever. Because, you know, there was no point. He would do it no matter what. He didn't care to have a life. He just, he was all about the killing and working for whoever the highest builder was. Whoever was giving him the highest paycheck, which was his country. Now, he's not Canadian like, uh, like Deadpool is. He is American. Um, and so he was working for the American government. That's where uh, Falcon is a part of. Um, so, uh, at one point... Falcon sends him and some of the other, he was some of their other top mercenaries uh, because they developed okay la, 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 I'm getting ahead of myself they developed this bio weapon this like virus that has no cure it's just designed to infect the enemy and kill them they wanted to make sure it worked so they sent Wayne Winston and a few other of their uh, top mercenaries to some unknown village somewhere in the middle of nowhere, South America somewhere, to test this weapon. Well, while testing this weapon, um, Kilpon gets infected with it. And it's this like bacterial... 
skin eating, body eating disease, like anybody that contracts it will die. There's no question about it. It will eat their insides and kill them. That's what it was designed for. So, Kilpon gets infected with it. Now, not to... They didn't want to lose one of their best weapons. So, they send Kilpon to this facility to see this doctor. Who is supposed to look at him and try to cure him. And... They didn't make an antidote. The agent that they created was solely designed to kill. So there was nothing the doctor could do to save him. Um, so essentially, basically, it was uh, make peace with whatever you have in your life. Say goodbye to any loved ones. You're dying. You are going to die. Um, so with that being said, Falcon pretty much gave up on him, in a sense. Uh, the doctor did suggest there was... There's one or two things that could have possibly happened with this next move. So the doctor suggests there is a facility that might possibly be able to cure him... Um, so the Falcon's like, you know, do whatever, send him wherever you need to send him, uh, we can't have him dying, blah, 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 blah. So, they send him to a place called the Dump. Now, the Dump is where they send... All their military employees from this uh, ARC. ARC was the uh, facility at first. Uh, ARC, A-R-K. I forget what the acronym stands for. So make sure you go to the GM's channel. Plus for initiative a bonus. He has a YouTube channel too. Ask him what ARC stands for. Or go to his like page. Ask him because I forget. I write Kilpon stuff. Which, you know. I kind of helped him build the comic book world too, but we're here to talk about Kilpon. Anyway, so he gets uh, sent, well, Ark is part of this uh, other organization. They develop clones, they develop, like, the weapons, the bioweapon that was created was created by Ark, created by Falcon, uh, through Ark. Um, they're the bad, they're the reason, one of the reasons that falcon is corrupt um so arc determines that there's nothing they can do to save wayne so then they send him to this branch office called the dump the dump is well like i said where they send all their military patients that are not going to survive and essentially there's a bunch of doctors there and their plan is to use these patients um, for experiments, for things, um, until they die, basically. Guinea pigs until they die. Like, what, what kind of things can they find using these patients? What kind of serums or uh, more bioweapon agents can they create? And test them on these patients before they expire. Now the facility's not fancy. It wasn't like a f even the in the Deadpool movie where Wade gets sent looks way cleaner than where they send Wayne Winston. Uh, the facility is just this. Regular looking hospital, um, cheap looking place on the outside. Uh, 
Wayne and several other patients that lived there lived in the basement of the place. Uh, it didn't even have a foundation. It was a dirt floor in the basement. Um, so yeah, they, they didn't care. Um, the, there was no need to set them up in anything comfortable because these people were expected to die. So why? There was no reason to make them comfortable because they're they're guinea pigs anyway. They're just test subjects. They're no longer human. And so Wayne, along with several other patients of the facility, that's where they lived, in the basement. Basically handcuffed to these, like, you ever see those old, old movies with the hospitals where, like, it's just beds along the wall and like they got all these tubes and shit hooked up to them so basically that, that's the type of beds they're all hooked up to they're handcuffed to um, then they come they get them every once in a while pull one out and do experiments on them now Wayne was meant to die like, he wasn't meant to last any amount of time like that the bio agent he got infected with was killing him so he's frail he's he's all sickly um, he's already um, getting sores all over his body from this agent eating him from the inside out so he doesn't have very long to live anyway and so they basically rush, start rushing experiments on him. And in the basement where they were forced to live was this basically in the middle of the floor of the basement. They had um, dug a hole in the ground. Like I said, it was a dirt ground. Dug a hole in the ground that had this water in it. Water and like some chloroph um, acid. Uh, I don't forget. I forget what's called. It's what uh, if you're Breaking Bad fans. It's what Walter and Jesse uses whenever they kill a guy and they put in that barrel. Diluted version of that. In the middle of this room, in this dirt floor. And they called it uh, the Kill Pond. Ha! Starting to see where this is getting ready to go. Alright, so. The Kill Pond in the basement. Where they put all their failed experiments after they have expired. Now this part is a little loosely based on the Deadpool comics where um, in the comics when Deadpool gets sent to a similar facility and basically they torture the shit out of him there is a thing of water um, in that facility called the Deadpool which is where he got his name in the comics. Um, so, there was a bet going on because when Wayne Winston shows up to this facility, uh, he doesn't look very good. He's a, excuse me, he doesn't look very good. Uh, he's already sickly looking. Um, so, he doesn't look like he's going to survive much longer or long and all so people in the facility doctors and patients included they start placing bets on him on how long he's going to survive how long before it's going to take before he is put into the kill pond um, so throughout his 
uh, tenure. Um, they inject him with various things, um, put him through various tortured things. Um, like I said, he already has uh, sores and stuff forming on him from the bio agent that he was uh, exposed to. So when they start experimenting on him, um, we're seeing if anything they inject in, into him will get rid of the agent, which it doesn't. The agent stays inside him constantly, like eating at his organs, um, putting sores and stuff on him. So eventually he ends up looking all scarred. He's got dried up tumors and boils um, and sores all over him. So, through these injections, they test various things on him, uh, various blood types um, of DNA uh, that these serums are made out of. Uh, one of them has werewolf DNA in it. Another one has uh, the blood of this ancient uh, person, which is actually... Um, another character in our game um, who was at the facility for a very short time um, another player plays him his name is Bloodshot he is old uh, he's kind of like our in a long roundabout very very loose sense he is like our Logan um, but he was at the f at the dump for a very short time and they had a sample of his blood which they used to create one of the serums that they use um, to inject into Kill Pond um, which there's other DNA in him like mystic DNA uh, blood from other creatures vampire whatever um, all mixed together being injected into him which eventually gives him his healing ability yes just like Deadpool has he can heal from anything the difference is with all the different DNA in in what was given to him um, his healing factor is a little bit better works a little bit faster than um, Deadpool's he can cure, um, he can even cure death in like six seconds. So if he ever was to like say, get blown up and killed, he would come back in six seconds. Um, unless there's a plot point for him to stay dead for a little bit longer, uh, which is there's something that happens to him later. Uh, we may get into later about that. Um, so, they inject him with all this stuff. How's that? It's looking pretty good. All black so far. I like how I got and I got these lines to go by um, for the design I want Kilpon to have. Uh, anyway, so. <coughs> uh, There's one doctor in particular who they come to start calling Dr. Smiles because she always is smiling when she's torturing patients. And once they realize, due to the healing ability that Kilpon, well, Wayne Winston has gained, once they realize that he can't die. Well, I mean, in a roundabout fashion, he can die. He'll just come back. Um, so he's not, he's not really overpowered. He just, he can heal. Um, he can be killed. Um, and he does hurt. Uh, once he ends up with this um, condition, 
uh, that's constantly eating away at his insides. Um, he's in constant pain. Uh, the, so basically the agent coursing through his body is constantly like eating at his insides and his healing ability is constantly regrowing his insides. So he's in a like, he's in a constant state of pain. Uh, he's just kind of, kind of is what makes him loopy. Now he also can break the fourth wall. Now since he's in a game, he is aware that he is a role play character. Um, and since he is a role play character, he's aware that he's based on Deadpool, actually. And so in character, he hates Deadpool because he says that Deadpool makes his life harder and that's kind of just a little haha -ha funny joke thing um but he can break the fourth wall now the reason he, there is a reason he can break the fourth wall uh because all the experiments and things that he went through uh he died over and over and while he was essentially dead, he was crossing over um, to the other side uh, between life and death constantly as they tortured him. And as he went through like the barrier of life and death so many times, essentially he's, he's broken. Um, and he starts to see what his world, he gets a glimpse of what his world really is. He sees the GM. He sees that his world is uh, a roleplay world. Um, so yeah, um, he sees the players. So he becomes aware that way. It's kind of like a kind of like, uh, it's part of his orange origin story as to why, how he can break the fourth wall. <clears throat> um, so, well, he becomes aware of what he is as far as role play care. Now, he doesn't, whenever he's involved in a role play scenario, because I've played him in other games as well, um, Eventually something happens in the superhero game um, that sends him like bouncing around to different universes. So uh, I play him in other role-playing games. Uh, role-play with him on uh, World of Warcraft. Um, so like there's a reason he ends up in World of Warcraft. Uh, I play him in a Dungeons and Dragons game. Um, just several other games that I play him in, which we'll get to eventually. Um, so, eventually, uh, he gets to a point where he realizes in this facility that he's never going to get out. Despite knowing that he's in a roleplay world or whatever, uh, he's still like a person that lives in that little world, so... Like he still experiences pain and all that stuff. So, uh, I apologize for the camera angle, guys. This is the best I can do. Huh, <laughs> working with what I got. But anyway, so he, uh, gets to the point where, like, he realizes that finally realizes that he does have this healing ability and he can heal anything. Oh, I left off with Dr. Smiles. Dr. Smiles, Wayne ended up being like his, her favorite subject to work with because he couldn't die. So she essentially could do whatever she wanted to him and he would still, he would heal it and be okay and be fine and she could torture him again later. 
so he she was like the number one doctor uh, to like do things like the number one doctor he ends up hating because of all the torture that she put him through that's not an underlying thing about what I think about women <laughs> that doesn't come from a place like that it's just a, a character story Sometimes character stories don't come from anywhere but imagination. Why is it not? Ooh, zoom in. Zoom in. That's better. That's better. All right. Um, so anyway, uh, this doctor smiles. She tortures him. Uh, she essentially, it gets to a point where, like, she turns it into, like, an event. Every time she's getting ready to, it's like, in a sense, a date for her. Not like it's weird sexual, like she has an orgasm. Which, I don't know, maybe we'll touch on that sometime later. We haven't really developed that character all that much. But who knows? Um, maybe it, it was kind of like that. Uh, but basically whenever she tortured him, she would smile because like, it was a thrill for her. Um, so that's how she got the nickname Dr. Smiles from the patients. Um, so, like I said, she turned it into an event. It was kind of like a date night for her whenever she would do that. Like, she would set up, like, this special time and, like, get all primped up and yada, yada, yada for their meeting. And she would proceed to, like, like incisions and, like, torture devices and, like, cut him open. Um, essentially, like, any kind of, like, torturous things you would think would happen in a facility like this, uh, she would do to him. And so, eventually, like, she basically would be, like, his most hated doctor in that facility. I mean, there was other doctors that tortured him as well. It was just she did it the most because she found, she got the most thrill out of it. Like, she would, uh, eventually she would, like, the doctors of the facility, like, just, it became a thing where, like, he was hers. He was her patient. Um, so eventually, uh, Wayne, his healing ability, like, starts to develop more, get stronger. And it gets to the point where, like I said, he can heal within six seconds. So he ends up, like, essentially, like, well, like you see in movies, someone breaks their thumb and, like, slips out of, like, the restraints or whatever. Um, so he does something kind of like that to break out of his shackles and the thumb will heal back like almost immediately and so when that happens he proceeds he, or he, he lets the other he ends up uh, releasing the other patients there's five of them um, that he ended up rescuing and we'll get to those later because those uh, eventually show back up too at some point um, but they all have some weird, uh, some weird healing thing, like he does, which he has the most, uh, I guess, powerful one. Uh, they all have their own little weird healing thing. Um, uh, but he helps rest, he helps them escape. He lets them go so they can run out, and then he proceeds to go on, like, a murder spree throughout this facility um and kills like every doctor in the place or so he thinks uh dun 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 comic book stuff um so um he ends up doing all that he ends up uh essentially uh, he finds Dr. Smiles. I forgot the name that we used. We might do that. I might ask the GM on our next stream 
How about some of this stuff so we can fill in the blanks of what I'm missing this time around. Um, <clears throat> so he finds Dr. Smiles and her, like, companion who's like this baboon, human, uh, spliced, hybrid person. Um, and he's basically like her Igor. Um, but he finds them. Uh, he ends up, like, you know, killing the shit out of them. And the last time he sees either of them is the roof collapsing on top of both of them in this, in their office. In her office. Um, as the, as he sets some things on fire and starts causing explosions throughout the building to basically, basically he destroys the whole building. Um... And the last time he sees them is, like I said, a roof falls on them. So, as he escapes, man, painting the inside of a fist is so fucking hard. Anyway, um, so he burnt, blows up the facility, uh, helps you know these other patients escape, and. When he gets out, finally gets out, um, he, mercenary work is all he knows. Um, but he's, he did some really, really bad things, and he took his punishment in the facility as kind of like, um, he was being punished for all the things that he had done when he was a soldier, when he was a mercenary, and would go, you know, do very, very, very bad things for very, very bad people. Um, so in a sense, like, he thought, for the longest time, he thought maybe he deserved everything that was happening to him in the facility because of everything that he himself did. Um, so when he finally, like, busted out, um, he still has that sense of, um, Redemption, like he wants to be redeemed, so he decides he's going to be a good guy. But mercenary work is all he ever, he's ever known. Uh, killing people is all he's ever known. So he tries his best to uh, when he starts his new mercenary life. Um, he only kills bad guys. He won't go against any innocents, especially any. He won't hurt women or children. Well, yeah. Uh, He's not a sexist. <laughs> He's an equal kill opportunist. So if there is like an evil woman that needs to be killed, he'll do that. Um, but he, it has to be a bad, bad person, or he won't do it. Um, so that's essentially his life. And so he makes a suit, he makes a costume, um, and calls himself. Kill Pond, because everybody thought that's where he was going to end up. Ta-da! So that's where his name comes from. Um, at one point, um, because he has, he had no idea that Ark was involved in, uh, had anything to do with the dump where he was. So at one point, because he avoids Falcon, at least so he thinks, um, so at one point, Ark hires him to hunt down um, one of their escapees. Uh, and they talk it up like, this is a very bad guy. Um, one of Another character that another player in our game plays, um, for, he first got noticed on YouTube. And he was just a vigilante. He wore a hoodie. and like, He didn't have a fancy superhero costume. Uh, he wore a hoodie, he had like this skull mask, like this dollar store Halloween skull mask he wears. And he has like a machete and some guns, and essentially he does, he's doing the same thing basically what Kilpon is doing. He goes out and kills bad people except his is more along the lines of street punks. Like he does the Punisher slash Taskmaster slash Batman type thing like he finds these 
group of gangsters in an alley trying to rape a girl or rob somebody, and he just fucking slaughters them. And so someone was able to take, like, a video of him and put it on YouTube. Um, and the YouTuber that filmed him basically said, um, was a fan of A Clockwork Orange. For any of you kids watching this right now, you should go watch A Clockwork Orange. It's very classic, um, but uh, make sure you're at least mature enough to handle the content in it. But anyway, um... And so one of the things the character says in A Clockwork Orange is, uh, when they were commenting on this vigilante, said that the fight was a real horror show. Real horror show. So the vigilante becomes, he doesn't name himself that, he becomes known as Horror Show. Um, now it turns out, um, Horror Show came from Ark. And I told you before that Ark is responsible for clones, um, which is up in the air at the moment. Uh, but Horror Show was one of the more predominant clones, or so everybody thinks. Everybody thinks he's the original. Um, there's speculation that he might actually be one of the clones as well. Um, no one really knows. That's not been revealed to anybody in-game or in the story yet uh, by the GM or by the player, so... Um, we don't know yet. But, one of Kilpon's first missions, uh, as Kilpon was, he's hired by Ark, or, or, English, he was hired by Ark to track down Horror Show. Now, like I said, they talked him up to be like, he's a bad guy, and he's going around killing people, and, um, he's a serial killer, and yada, yada, yada. And... So, of course, Kilpon's like, oh, well, this dude's bad. I have to kill him. So, he, um, starts, like, he sees the stuff on YouTube, and he starts setting it up to where, like, um, he can intercept Horror Show, um, and end up following him. Now, like I said... When Kill Pond was, um, a mercenary, he's very good at his job. So, like, even though he's loosely based on Deadpool, he does have some kind of comical things about him. But, uh, he's, he's a serious character. He, he does some serious work. So he starts investigating um, this horror show guy, and while he's doing that, while he's investigating the horror show, he ends up running into a char another character called Black Mask, who looks, who dresses up. Almost exactly like Horse Show does. He is another clone. And Horse Show. And so he looks, he talks, he acts uh, just like Horse Show, but he's a bit more brutal in the killings that he does. Like he is a legit serial killer. Um. So when Kilpon finds him, uh, he thinks that's Horror Show, to which Black Mask doesn't correct him, because Black Mask is also looking for Horror Show, because he hates Horror Show. This is a really awkward part, hating the crack, and the ass, and eventually the crotch. It's weird. This is weird. I hope there's not a fetish for this. Probably is. It's fetish for weird stuff out there. Um, so anyway, Black Mask doesn't tell him any different. He lets Kilpon continue to think that he is Horror Show. And while he's 
they're, they fight. And Black Mask fights just like Horror Show does. Um, so, eventually, when Kilpon does run into Horror Show, and they fight, he still thinks it's the same guy. So, they end up fighting, and Kilpon keeps making reference of, you know, of how they fought before, and Horror Show is like, I don't even fucking know you. And Kilpon's like, yeah, likely story, and is basically, and is all, you're coming with me. Um, which the contract is dead or alive, so, uh, Kilpon's like, either you come with me one way or another. Well, Kilpon's good. I mean, he's a good fighter. But, uh, he's not horror show good. Which, horror show has this thing where he can mimic someone's fighting style. Basically read their mind and watch their fighting style. Like, he could watch, like, kung fu movies. That's how he learned how to fight. He watched kung fu movies and, um, basically... With the ability he has, was able to mimic uh, the what he saw on screen. So, but Kilpon knows a bunch of different tactics and also has a wacky mind due to him uh, being able to see and break the fourth wall. Uh, so Horsho has trouble mimicking his fighting style. Um, which eventually, like, if he concentrates hard enough, eventually he will be able to mimic Kilpon's fighting style. But the first few times they meet, he can't. And Porsche, like, they tear each other up pretty good. Like, eventually Kilpon follows him, um, to this mall, this abandoned, um, abandoned mall. That basically, Kil or Horsho is using as a his base, um, and Kilpon's able to track him there, and uh, that's how they fight. And eventually, Kilpon gets blown up. Well, not essentially blown up, but, like, he gets to a point where Horsho can trigger these guns that he set up, and he gets, like, shot from all these different angles with all these guns that Horsho set up. Which is a little comic thing that I put together that's on my like page, if you'd ever, like, anyone's ever interested in reading that, you can go to my like page. It's facebook.com slash killpond. Um... But yeah, uh, there's a little comic on there about how that played out. Um, well, the comic on there isn't really what happened. That's Kilpon's version of it. And then uh, there's a little role play I did with the guy who plays Horror Show where the real story gets told, and that's where the mall part comes in. Um,. So then, uh, after that happens, uh, Horsho ends up escaping, um, Kilpon ends up, because Horsho sets the mall up to blow, basically, like, they've been compromised, so he sets his lair up to explode, and I probably should have done the red parts first. Anyway, um, so him and Horizon shows up. Horizon's another member of the line, um, that she is a gravity manipulator, uh, since she can use it to fly, uh, she can, uh, manipulate the gravity around her. Um, 
so she can take the gravity away, or she can um, make gravity more and basically slam people to the ground. Uh, she can create black holes. She could create singularities um, to like a pinpoint accuracy. So if she wants to create a black hole in someone's head, um, then <clears throat> basically she could create a singularity in the face of someone's brain and kill them. Um, so her and Horsha are friends. And while he's fighting Kilpon, Horizon shows up uh, through like a portal. And basically, or well, he calls her um, something like that. I'll have to go back and look at the story. That's also on my like page. Um, but either he calls it, anyway, at some point, Horizon shows up. And she opens up a portal for them to escape through and right before the mall can blow up Kilpon makes his way out um oh wait, but uh, not before he finds like one of horse shows rocket launchers that he leaves behind um and then that was the one of the beginnings of Kilpon's superheroing um and there's more t to, like, interaction with Horse Show and all of them, uh, but this is Kilpon's life. So eventually Kilpon meets Enrique, this simple Mexican guy who's running a taco stand. Um, he just, one day he's on, like, a job. It wasn't the Horse Show job, but he's on, like, a job. And he ends up... Um, just jumping into the back of the truck of this taco truck that this guy in Rinke owns and he's like go 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 and Enrique is like startled and doesn't know what's going on so he just fucking drives um which turns into like this odd kind of friendship development um and Kilpon ends up working for him it's like a side job other than the mercenary stuff, uh, he helps Enrique run this taco truck. Um, and Enrique is like his best friend, uh, kind of sidekick. Uh, he's at least his driver. Um, and the only thing Enrique says is C. So, uh, whenever he's trying to talk to him, he's just C. Um, and that's all he can get out of him. Like, for the years and years, they've been friends. That's all he's ever heard Enrique say. Um, but they run this taco truck together. And um, that's his side job. Enrique is his friend. And so he ends up, Kilpon ends up becoming like co-owner of this taco business. So one of the awesome skills that he has is uh, cook. So every, like any other game of Putty Man, one of his expertise is cooking. Because he is good at cooking. Especially tacos. Um, he doesn't like chimichangas. Ha! Uh, so yeah, that's, uh, let's see, some of his life. Um, there's Enrique. He has a gunrunner friend that he calls one of his contacts whenever he needs like a new gun uh, or he needs to find out information um, about shady people he calls his other friend called Badger yeah that one's not a that one's not hard to figure out um, but Badger's a gun running gun runner type uh, he knows a bunch of shady people, so whenever Kilpon needs information about a shady person, he calls Badger. Okay, so I take a little break. I'm sorry. So I hope that doesn't come out in the edit thing. So uh, what I've done is I've touched up some of the black stuff because I'm sure you don't, you guys don't want to see me 
painting nothing but black this entire time, even though this has taken up the majority of the video. So what we're going to do now is start on the red parts. Although we'll, we'll need to paint that belt eventually, so but we'll get to that momentarily. Um, so in case you've in case you've forgotten, yeah, this is what eventually this is what we're trying to do at least get to that point. So go back down there. So I don't exactly recall where I was in the story so we're just gonna jump in and hope for the best so I'm sorry if this story is a little choppy any questions about the story comment below and ask me to fill in the gaps alright so Kilpon and the superhero team that's in the game. Um, superhero game is called, well, the superhero team is called the line. Because um, you don't want to cross the line. Uh, they're kind of like, mm, they're more, there's a superhero as a... Um, as best as they can be uh they don't exact they don't um the lion won't hesitate to take out a bad guy like as in kill him uh they have no problems with that because some bad guys don't deserve to survive i mean they do capture some um but if they deserve to be put down They'll do that. They will put one down. So, how Kilpon gets involved with them, there's another character um, known as Sergeant McCoy. Uh, he essentially is a, um, a Captain America soldier type. Um, he ends up getting framed. This is also like when Sergeant McCoy gets introduced. Um, so what better way to do it than with Kilpon? Um, so he gets framed for this murder. So while Kilpon is helping Enrique on the taco truck, he gets a call from Badger. Um, basically saying, uh, you know, there's this guy on the news who's wanted for murder and he looks like a tough guy and it seems like something that's right up your alley there's already bounties coming in for him um looks like it'd be a pretty good payday and from what i hear he's a bad guy um he got framed for some murders in a church um well badger doesn't tell him he's framed uh, but all he knows is he killed a bunch of people in a church uh, so Kilpon's like, all right, let's go kill this guy. So, um, closes up shop, uh, gets Enrique to, you know, start driving, and the taco truck essentially is part of Kilpon's little arsenal thing. Um, basically when they're done with the taco business, um, they flip around, like, the counters and some of the appliances and that's where all of Kilpon's equipment is. Uh, so they, I don't think I was supposed to paint that part. Um, nope, totally was it. Oh wait, that might be all right. Anyway. I'll touch it up later. Anyway, so they get ready to roll uh, to go find this guy. He just murdered a bunch of people in a church. Um, so they're driving along, they go in this alleyway, and all of a sudden this uh, soldier guy pops up in the alleyway asking for help. Like, ends up 
uh, or they find him in an alleyway. And so he's asking, he's like, uh, he's, Kilbom's gonna kill him. There ain't no if ands, or buts about it. He's gonna kill him. Uh, but he tells him, uh, you know, he was framed, it was a setup, and he needed help. Um, so Kilbon's like, all right. Because here's the little thing about Kilbon, he just won't go in guns a blazing. Uh, if he genuinely believes, someone has a, he has a knack for people that are telling the truth. Um, and that doesn't have anything to do with his fourth wall breaking. He still has to do, like, the normal role play rules of rolling dice for anybody that's not familiar with how role play goes rolling dice and determining the skill to see if you believe the person or whatever um so he determines that this soldier guy sergeant mccoy is telling the truth so he decides to help him um because he's an innocent guy he doesn't he's not gonna kill an innocent so he um loads him up in the truck and uh they him and Enrique go off to help Sergeant McCoy clear his name. Um which eventually they end up meeting the other members of the line which consist of oh, I'll back that up. Oh damn. Uh, which consists of a uh, horror show by this point, uh, Horizon by this point, then another guy called Lord Magnus, who none of us know in game, but is a 11 year old prodigy. Um, but he's like naturally um, magic. It's he was born with it. Um, but he's an 11 year old prodigy, so he has all the, like, um, basically all the personality traits of a asshole 11 year old, um, that thinks they're better than everybody else. Um, so, uh, but nobody knows that because he's got, he's taller than, like, what a normal 11 year old should be. Um, and so everybody thinks he's an adult, so that's why they don't really question it. Um, so he's essentially, he's kind of the leader at this point, but I mean, he's smart enough to be. So eventually, uh, Kilpon shows up in the taco truck. They end up running into one another, and they're after Sergeant McCoy as well. Uh, there's another character who's searching for him called the Angel, uh, Zachariah, who's essentially a fallen angel from heaven. Uh, not because he's bad, there's another underlying story going with that, um, but essentially uh, there was a plot that was going to happen that the Archangels were planning, and um, this Archangel did not agree with it, and it was like, no, I'm going to stop you, and they kick him out of heaven, and that's basically that. More on him later. Um, so he, he finds them first. An angel's a big dude. Big, powerful dude. Big, flaming angel sword. Um, you know, everything that you would think an angel would have. Uh, but considering, since it's a role-playing game, um, he's not so powerful. Because, you know, role-playing game. So when he falls from heaven, um... His powers aren't as powerful as they should be, like godlike powerful. Um, so he meets the angel. Eventually, Kilpon just gets roped in to be part of the team, along with Sergeant McCoy, because he convinces the angel, who the angel is, excuse me, the angel is kind of gullible. Um, so he he's one of those that tries to see the good in everybody and. Yada yada. So he believes he believes Kilpon and Sergeant McCoy right away and um, introduces them to the line, uh, which eventually they join. Now, the line, uh, they eventually go about um, 
clearing Sergeant McCoy's name because they find out who really did it, which that was a game years ago, and I don't even remember. <laughs> good storytelling, good storytelling, Kilpon. Um, I don't even remember exactly everything that happened with that, but it doesn't matter. I can touch upon that more later. I don't think this will be the only video I will do ever. Who knows? Um, but, so, I probably should have put a coat of black on that. Five, okay. Um, so, they join the line. The line has this, well, thanks to Lord Magnus, has this, um, pocket dimension castle, basically. Imagine if a 11-year-old was going to make, or an 11-year-old who was a fan of Harry Potter, uh, which essentially that's what his costume kind of consisted of. Uh, he found like a Death Eater's mask and just and ski goggles, random stuff around. Like, imagine if like an 11-year-old tried to make his own real-life superhero. Um, that's seems what he did. And so, but he, like I said, he was, uh, in magic. So imagine a kid <clears throat> with magic who wants to make a superhero base. And turns into, like, this big pocket dimension magical area castle with, like, all these, um, construct elves that help, help out and, um this hologram AI called Hoggy uh, that helps out with things. Um, so yeah, there's that. And that's how Kilpon ended up as part of the team. Now there's a lot of weird shit going on. Um, there's a villain who is essentially the line's arch nemesis called the Atomic Brain, who is maniacal, crazy, um, and he wants nothing but the destruction of the line. Um, that's the basics of the line. There was another character that I played before Kilpon. Uh, called Super Joker, which I might not, I'm probably not going to go too far into him, but essentially he was the Joker with Superman's powers, but he was a superhero. He was a good guy. Well, eventually. Um, that's something for another video. Um, so, Kilpon um, joins the superhero line team. And there's a lot of things that happen with the line that he gets involved in. Uh, well, eventually, and now, throughout this whole time, he's learning who Lord Magnus is. Well, I mean, not the kid part, but no one knows his identity. Uh, but eventually, like, he's learned that everybody... Lord Magnus is kind of an asshole, but nobody realizes he's just a kid. And he just thinks he's an asshole. Um, but eventually, like, they grow up. And he gets older, goes through puberty, and... He doesn't stop being an asshole. Um, so, eventually, uh, well, Kilpon's one of them that kind of starts resenting him. Um, just because he's aloof and like, you know, this random stuff you're doing right here, that's pointless. Why are you doing it? You're stupid for doing it. Yada, yada, yada. So eventually people get tired of his shit. Um, so eventually, and this is years, years later, this was recently, um, we did a thing where, like, you know how most comic, a lot of comic books will have, like, their final issue, but basically, like, a, eh, not really a reboot, but, like, their final issue, and then they'll start over again, uh, like, vo issue one, volume two, um, so eventually, 
uh, we would do that. Um, what happens is um, the Super Joker that I played uh, ends up being a clone from Ark. And there's another one running around. Now the thing with Super Joker was, and I guess I'm going to get into it anyway. The um, thing about Super Joker was he was a clone, but he wasn't he was basically a failed clone because everybody in our world has this meta gene. Well, Super Joker's meta gene was fucked up. And every once in a while, his powers would go crazy and he'd end up with like a power he never had before uh, temporarily. Well, there was another clone, which was like the perfect clone. And he, there was nothing wrong with him. He was like, he didn't have a messed up metagene. And he would eventually, uh, he was 10 times more powerful than Super Joker. And so eventually he would fight the line. Like, I know he fought him several times, but each time he ended up showing up more powerful. And this was, this would have been the final final issue of the first volume so they fight General Zod his, his name was General Jod J-O-D I don't know if a lot of people get that but yeah um, they ended up the whole team ended up fighting him and <clears throat> the whole team ended up getting their ass kicked and so in the last ditch move <clears throat> Super Joker sacrifices himself to um, save the team and all the team is down and Super Joker or I mean Jod is getting ready to shoot out like his heat vision to basically decimate like the members of the line that are laying at his feet and in the last ditch move Super Joker moves to intercept the blast and stops it but he gets a hole through his chest and dies um, but it distracts Jod long enough for Horizon to wake up and put a singularity in his brain you know, I talked about Horizon earlier and her powers about being able to create singularities and all that. Um, so, ends up putting a singularity in Jod's brain and killing him. Um, so, at the funeral, uh, Super Joker's funeral, um, everybody gathered. Now, there's a, a whole other team in our world. Basically, they're the NPCs team. Um, called Alpha Squad. Um, it consists of... I don't remember. <laughs> I don't remember all of them, but there's the uh, Red Hood, uh, who's like this mystic Green Llama, who's like this mystic healer guy. Uh, the Eagle, who is like our version of Batman. Um, uh, it's a woman. Uh, she's a billionaire. Yada, yada, yada. Everything... Uh, pretty much Batman. She has her own sidekick called the Hawk. Uh, there was the Silver Champion. No, he wasn't in Alpha Flight. Um, there was a Superman character, which I forget about him. Once again, that's another question you'll have to go ask the GM about. Um, so, at the funeral, Magnus is being his usual ass self and says something something along the lines of you know one less clown or the clowns killed each other or something like that which pisses everyone off um now part of Magnus's and horror shows thing is they were always partners um so they were always together which they kind of led they were kind of the leaders of the line for a while um but, um, even Horror Show got mad, and 
was like, he sacrificed himself for the rest of us. You asshole. Like, he killed himself to save us. And at that moment, this team splits up and disbands and goes their own way. Um, nobody hears from Magnus for a while. For like years, uh, everybody, uh, horror show ends up going missing, uh, which we find out where he ends up, but we don't find that out till later. Um, but horror show goes missing. The remaining members, Kilpon, Horizon. Oh, um, during the time uh, of all that, there was a character called he. He was an Adams essentially. He was part of the. He was. In the Adams family, yes, the ones that you're thinking of. Gomez, Morticia, da 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 da. Yeah. Um, those guys. Uh, but eventually he ends up uh, leaving uh, to do something with the family or something like that. Um, and we do. This is our last issue of our first comic. Um, we do like a five-year time skip, and but we explain things that happened in those five years. Um, Kilpon and a few of the others end up working for Falcon again. Falcon ends up getting cleaned up; they're no longer corrupt, so they agree to work for Falcon. They become Falcon agents. Um, even Kilpon agrees um, after the years that he spent avoiding it. But they prove that they're different now. Um, uh, there was a dinosaur attack uh, that they all ended up getting involved in and in saving New York City. Uh, or, or saving Washington, D.C. I'm sorry. There was another attack uh, by another villain on New York City um, that they ended up getting involved in and in saving New York City. During this five years. Now, also during this five years, Kilpon ends up um, getting close to the Eagle. Now, if you remember what I just said about the Eagle, she was the Batman of this world. But she's kind of a bitch. Kind of like uh, how Batman is kind of a dick. And. So, but, the, like, he ends up, like, they don't plan it. Like, he's looking in on gang activity, some kind of criminal activity, and she ends up looking in on the same type of what's going on, and they kind of just, one of those accidental superhero team-ups. Um, and eventually it, it just ends up happening, like, a few times, and Kilbun thinks they're friends by this point, and she's, but... Kilpon's also, everybody in the superhero community thinks he's a joke. So nobody takes him serious, and the Eagle is one of the, like, more respected members of the superhero community, so she's one of the people that think he's a joke, and don't want to even give him the time of day. So she kind of, like, she's rude to him. And eventually, you know... Because uh, he's always breaking the fourth wall thing, and everybody thinks he's just crazy and making jokes all the time. And he's not. He's legit. Knows what he's talking about. Uh, so eventually she's like, uh, you don't know what it's like to have a hard life. Um, how could you ever, you don't take nothing seriously. And like she ends up just basically going off on him. Uh, to which he ends up going off on her. Um, explaining that, uh, you know, he has that bio agent running through him constantly all the time. He's in pain. Uh, he constantly has to heal from that. Uh, if it wasn't for his healing ability, like, he would die. Um, uh, like, she basically throws out that she doesn't know what kind of stuff he has been through in his life. And that he is constantly slowly dying on the inside every day bitch and then runs off 
Well, as it turns out, uh, the eagle feels bad, ends up, like, instantly regrets the things she says. Because as it would turn out, the eagle had cancer and was dying, which is why one of the reasons she was always uh, so bitchy to people, because she's basically trying to keep people from finding out um, and making sure, like, eh, there's, you know, the typical, I don't want people to miss me kind of things, um, but I also don't want people to know I have this, because she was, like, trying to find a cure. Um, so eventually, like, she finds him, finds Kilpon again, and apologizes, um, and they become actual friends, um, and then eventually, they start dating, um, while they're dating, she confides in him that she does have cancer, and blah, 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 that shit happens. <clears throat> well, uh, they stay together for a few years, two or three years. They're always together. Um, until he finds out that um, eating him, so she can find out about his healing ability. Basically, she wants to uh, get a sample of his DNA and use that uh, find out a way to synthesize out of his healing ability to cure her own cancer and he finds out about that and basically ends up leaving the relationship so mind you if anybody's been paying attention this long, thank you for being here this long. I know this is a really long thing. I apologize. Figures don't paint themselves. Um, eventually, uh, she calls him uh, a few months later, asking to see him because basically... <laughs> She's on her deathbed. And she calls him uh, to come see her before she dies. So he goes to her house. And basically she tells him that it wasn't all about the healing ability. And that she really did love him. And that she really did fall for him. And that she was sorry. Um, and... While they're talking, while she's telling him this, uh, she, well, she gets out what she needs to get out, and while he's holding her, her hand, she dies. So, the ego dies while Kilpon is holding her hand. Sad moment. For our hero. Um, which eventually. There's a funeral. And. He ends up. Giving the eulogy. Uh, but like I said. Everybody thinks Kilpon is a joke. So. At the funeral. Everybody thinks. Um, nobody t is taking him seriously. And he gives this very, like, surprisingly serious, heartfelt speech, eulogy, um, for her. And ends with uh, going to her coffin and pulling out a ring and putting it on her finger. Uh, while some other heroes that was on her super team are basically getting up to um, drag him out because they don't think he should be there they think it's all a joke to him until the hawk the eagle sidekick shows up 
and basically tells them that they're all assholes, that everything that Kilpon just said was true. They were together, and they should leave him alone, and ends up helping, escorting Kilpon out, basically, helping him get out of there. Um, so, eventually, well, uh, there was a wheel for the Eagle. Her name was Jessica Lockhart, by the way. Lockhart Industries was her um, company. Um, so, as it would turn out, in her wheel, she left a few things for Kilpon to do, like take care of her sidekick, David Lockhart, who was um, her nephew. And she was taking care of him. And basically, um, she wanted Kilpon to look after him after she was gone. Uh, which eventually, there's a whole plot with that, where the hawk ends up going bad because eventually he resents Kilpon um, for getting close to the eagle. Um, and blaming Kilpon, Kilpon for like everything getting screwed up because uh, the company basically uh, a lot of her company gets left to Kilpon because um, she realizes that he's not just a simple joke anymore uh, but not really like he's not the owner but he gets uh, basically watch over it so people don't like start tearing it apart after she's dead. Um, but eventually the Hulk gets the Hulk. Ha! Hawk gets angry and resents him for it um, and ends up turning into a villain who starts working for the Atomic Brain. A villain by the name of Midnight. Um, which turns into a big like dramatic story that ends up happening. Um, so, eventually, as it would turn out, um, Kilpon, so, while they were together, uh, the eagle ended up pregnant, and she never told Kilpon about it, but she basically took the baby to a lab. Um, to be studied, to figure out, this is before they broke up, to figure out, because uh, it, it's now a mix of her DNA and his DNA, and figure out how they could synthesize a healing ability or a cure for her cancer. Um, but due to inheriting Kilpon's healing ability, um... It causes the baby to age very fast. So in three years, um, she grows to that. She grows to the um, age of a teenager, 16 year old. Um, and ends up, and due to like the eagle inherited like. Um, Abilities and stuff from the Eagle and Kilpon both. She ends up escaping the lab she was left in. And eventually donning or making like a similar costume to her dad's. And finding him. And basically becoming his sidekick. Now she, her healing ability that she has isn't as prominent as uh, Kilpons. Her name is Kay Pond. Oh, so an original name. Because her real name's Katie. Um, her healing ability is as strong as his, where he can heal anything in about six seconds. Hers takes about four hours. Um, so, like, it's essentially the same. It just takes longer for her. Okay, dokie. 
So, that's mostly coupon story. I might cover more things later, but for now, looks like we're about finished. There are some touch-ups I probably need to do, but now I need to work on the eyes. This is going to be the hard part. This is going to be the hard part. Let's see if we can pull this off. Now, where was I? Alright, so... Uh, Kilpun just found out that he had a daughter. Um... Who escaped a lab? Um, this is the most difficult part. Um, a lab that the ego had put her in to try to use her to find a cure for her own cancer. Um, And she escapes. Uh, and becomes Kilpon's sidekick. And oh man, this is so hard. This is so hard. Don't want to get it on the eye part. Probably should use a smaller brush, but like I said, I'm poor and work with what I got. I didn't even right shape. Maybe some touch-ups on that later. So yeah, eventually, Kilpon, let's see, there's the battle in Washington, D.C. with the dinosaurs, battle with a, a villain called Lord Recluse in New York, where a bunch of heroes band together. And tried to thwart him. Kilpon and K Kilpon and Kapon were both part of that fight. Um, and then eventually, um, throughout this whole time, the line has been split up. Several members of the line have shown up, have come up missing or dead, and nobody knows why. Um, at some point, <coughs> uh, there was a member of the line called Roulette, that was one of the former members, who sends Kilpon a text message. He's in the middle of a fight for his life. And Kilpon's the first one he ends up sending a message to to try to get some help. And oh, fuck that up, I'm so bad. I'll fix that. Um As soon as Kilpon gets the message a uh, flash of light happens <clears throat> in his apartment and he gets sucked through time which leads Kilpon into the other parts of his 
well, not play him, start playing him in other role plays, like other Dungeons and De Dungeons and Dragons games, and when he lands in World, World of Warcraft um, world, um, and he goes missing. This happens about year four during the five year time skip that we're doing, and eventually. He's missing for a year. Now, time is weird, so he could have spent like five years in the world of Warcraft, ten years in the D and D worlds, and still only be gone a year in the line world. Um. So, yeah, that's pretty much it for Kilpon in the line verse, which. I'll go over some of the stories he's went through. Um, eventually, I'm going to clean this stuff up, and then we're going to end this video. So, I shall return. And here we are. The finished product. I'll get some better pictures, but... I'm not a professional or like a super artist or anything, but I, don't know, I think it did pretty good. I'll get some close up pictures. And there you have it one action figure of moi. I hope you liked the video. I hope it wasn't too long, so I apologize about that. Uh, once again, don't forget to subscribe and hit that like button. Uh, follow me on Twitch and look for me in my GM's gaming stream. See you next time, guys.